uh, the, the key to those, if we use them, wherever you make a splice that the barb will come down through the plastic, make sure you reinforce that plastic with tape first because of gravity and then also the pressure differential. Eventually that cut, if we don't use tape, will start to tear and your containment lid or ceiling will fall down. <coughs> the 2x14, uh, and I've done this on, especially on commercial losses, we've actually used 2x4s, friction fit containment, and we will span a, a grid on these drop shims. If we don't have the 2x4s, and this is a strong method that I'm getting ready to show you, if we don't have the 2x4s, consider doing this method. So I pre-cut this piece. <coughs> I'm not going to, to do a large area. I'm just simply going to uh, do a little turn uh, back here in this area around this uh, HVAC supply uh, hose here, or supply duct. Supply that. <coughs> we want to get an idea of where our containment is going to be. Cut your piece large enough. This is where it's helpful to have uh, maybe an extra hand helping you, especially if you're doing the entire wall. <coughs> Here, you want to give me a hand? I want to go up on the ladder. Got my scissors in my back pocket and my towel. Good utility knife, use it safely. We're going to go up on the ladder, make sure we're using the ladder properly. And I'm going to take my containment around this grid, splice it, and come around this grid here. Uh, you want to check before we start this and see how easily the tiles pop up. Uh, and then once we move them up, we're going to actually drop them right back down. <coughs> if we're in a uh, on a project where the tiles are in place, these tiles will work well for a containment lid. As long as they're not stained, they're not contaminated, they're not discolored, there's no uh, pieces missing out of them, we want them to lay down to the grid as well. So if you notice this, sometimes we can just come along, pop the grid, and just as you saw there, it will drop back down. I'm going to move my ladder back just a little bit here. The way that I'm going to get this started, I'm just going to hold enough plastic to the width of this ceiling tile, and I'm going to tear off a piece of tape that is the size of that ceiling tile in between the cross members or sections of the grid. And we're going to come back and we're going to stick it half to the plastic and the other part, the other half, is going to be off. We're going to use this, and I'm just going to tap it right here to my ladder. I'm going to slide this ceiling tile up out of my way. Get that started. And I drew this on the board for you the other day. I'm going to fold that tape lip over the T grid of this grid, over the top of it. I didn't come down onto the ceiling, or come down onto the tile, uh, I came right down on top of the grid, right across the grid. Sometimes it can be tricky getting these tiles to lay back down, that's especially going to happen when they have the uh, hangers in place. Now right here, uh, where we're making a turn, it's going to make a small little cut. A little splice that we can turn the corner here. <clears throat> and again, I'll make sure I can slide this tile out of the way. Uh, this is flat, so you can push these up, move these out of the way. Just be careful. Make sure we know what we're doing before we do it if you don't. <coughs> I'm going to hold this up, get an idea of where I need to do a splice. And each one of these, if I'm running this entire wall or entire ceiling, at each cross member, I'm just going to cut about a half inch to an inch of the plastic to make a little splice. 
the, the plastic will tuck up into the ceiling. We'll hold this here, make that little splice cut. Again, we consider this just doing the entire way. You do it the same way. I'm going to size my tape. The mat, stick it to the plastic first. Half to the plastic. The other half is off. And we're going to reach up inside here. Eyeball your lines, right? We want our lines to be straight. Think about how much plastic is going in, uh, up into the, the ceiling as well. This ceiling is insulated, so I'm going to lift that insulation up out of the way. It doesn't do any good to take to the insulation. The containment won't stick as well. This ceiling tile drops a whole lot easier because there isn't any uh, ceiling grid tile. If you've ever taken ceiling tiles down or put them in, you know how those grid ties will restrict the tile from falling back down? That's what's happening over here on the other side. No big deal. We'll come back and we'll fix that. Over here on this side, we're going to lift it up. We'll do the same thing. Uh, tape it up across the top, and then we drop this duct right back down. Why didn't um, like the other side you put up, you put it lift in like this, and this side you put in it so it's like... It makes no difference. Good question, but it makes no difference. It's just uh, there's more room on this side for the ladder than, than on that side. But that's exactly why I do it. Sometimes we're going to be restricted like that out in the field, right? We don't have uh, we don't have the room to get the ladder. So you're working inside the containment versus outside the containment. So very good question, Shane. <clears throat> Come up to the uh, ceiling. I'm going to slide this up out of the way. Uh, again, if you're not sure how to uh, move the ceiling tiles or move the uh, ducting, as I just did, maybe you want to consult with someone who's done this before to make sure you're not going to cause any issues. Okay? We don't want anything falling on someone's head. So I'm taping it to the plastic first. Then I'll reach up inside here, move the insulation out of the way, tape it up over the top of the grid. Now that I have this out of the way, I can reach over there and tuck that tile that wasn't wanting to seat. I can tuck it down. Come back, reseat this grid. And if we notice, you can come up, you can stand, there's no holes around the top of the ceiling. This is a tight. Container. I like that better than the dirt pulls. Well, you might consider this if we don't have our tension poles. Now, in one of my video, in one of the pictures that I showed in the presentation, I, I showed using, uh, or it showed using those poly hangers. In that picture, there was no uh, ceiling tiles. A contractor had come in and, and started a remodel of that unit. They took all the ceiling tiles out and then they started uh, demoing the walls and, and they found uh, a little bit at a time. You know, the individual the contractor was over on the one side and another side and one was in the middle and they all found a little bit of contamination and at break time they got to talking to each other and so they stopped work and we came in and we built a ceiling and then I dropped the plastic down and, and just, just cured it uh, to the floor. We used some tape and secured it to the floor and then we did the remediation just by hanging it off of the grid work. What we're going to do next is I want to eyeball it to be straight from the, from the uh, grid work down to the floor. I want to try to get this as straight as possible uh, from the top to the bottom. And then also, if you notice, my lines are running this way. When I make my cuts, I use these lines as a point of reference. So if I'm looking at this here, and I know that the structure is somewhat square, it may not be perfectly square, but most of them should be somewhat square, then I'm going to use these lines as a point of reference when I make any cut on my plastic. So we're going to pull this down tight, 
Uh, and again, plumb, it's not going to require us to get a level out, but I want to be as straight as I can be, uh, just eyeballing it. And that also is going to allow me to pull it tighter. Then I'm going to use this line that's on the ground as a point of reference, knowing where my seam, folded edge, will be uh, and what I want left or remaining. And I'm going to go ahead and make my cut for both sides. The corner that I'm going to turn and where I'm going to start with. Now, uh, you want to be careful with the type of tape that you stick or you adhere to the carpet because you can leave some residue. Uh, and definitely if there's tracking that where that tape residue was left behind, it's going to pick up dirt. That's where your gaff tape is probably the best tape to use for that. So the, the tape that we have over there, the green tape, they have it in different colors, but green is good in terms or reference of uh, safety. What I want you to do is hold that tight, right there, just like that. <coughs> And then put one in there. Okay, hold it down. And now I'm going to come straight below. It's nice here, we have the carpet tiles. You can use those to help give you reference. And I like to free tape it. So we do one that was half and half. Then now I'm going to go half on the tape and half back onto the carpet. Then this next piece is half on the first piece of tape and half on the plastic. I also notice that I'm going to turn the edge, or what I would call a flange, out and away from where the pressure differential is going to be created. I'm going to now take my scissors just like I did on the ceiling, and I'm going to cut the corner directly below. When I cut this, this will allow me to turn the material, to turn the plastic, so I get a nice corner, <coughs> and it presents well. Then I'm going to come back with the tape, pull this down tight, and we're going to secure it just like we did the other side. Right now we're just doing a small area for this, and keep in mind, you can take this and we could span the entire length of this classroom. Then we'll come back and we'll do these edges here, pull them down tight. And I like my tape to look nice where it's all square or close. All my edges are lining up, you see there. Uh, I don't want it to be all jagged and, and look messy, right? So we want everything to look nice and neat on these edges here. Come back, I've got a little bit of an opening. Then we'll put a little piece of tape right here. And tear it, press it across the plastic. And there we go. <coughs> Uh, we went the entire length of the classroom. This would be secured enough that we could create a pressure differential. Minimal materials. It's going to be strong enough. Right? This is as strong as that ceiling is. We've been here for four days and it hasn't fallen on anybody yet. So this container should last. Any questions? Alright. Let's take a, a short break. Seven and a half minutes, and we'll start our review.